everyone, welcome back to Storytime, thank you for joining me. Today we're reading part three of The Boy Who Grew Dragons by Andy Shepherd. If you haven't caught up with the first parts of the story yet, then check out the description below. I'll post the links in there so you can catch up with the story. So, so far we've found that Thomas, the main character of our story, has found some strange fruits in his granddad's garden. And those fruits have hatched a very interesting animal. Let's see what's going to happen next. Chapter four. It's a dragon. Okay, so maybe you'd be totally cool if you found a dragon in your bedroom. Maybe it wouldn't phase you at all and you'd just know what to do. You'd be all like, hey, cool, that's a cool dragon. I am cool about that. But me, I didn't have a clue what to do about it. And I definitely wasn't feeling cool about it. I mean, it was a dragon. It might only have been big enough that it could sit on my hand and so far its fire breathing had only produced a spark, but hello, it was a dragon. It made the strange fizzling match sound again. And the most I could manage to get out at this point was a whispered, Whoa. Then we stared at each other for a really long time. My head is always brimming with ideas and stories. Miss Logan says that my imagination is like a geezer gushing out ideas 24 hours a day. But right then, it was like the geezer had been sat on by one of those enormous elephant seals with the weird shrunken trunk. And all I could squeeze out was, there's a dragon in my room, on my carpet, right now. Talk about stating the obvious. Then, bit by bit, the elephant seal flubbered away and the geezer spluttered back to life. I pictured my dragon shooting out mighty flames and me riding across the sky on its back. And I thought, I'm going to have the most utterly mind-blowingly amazingest pet of all time. Move over, Liam. I have the best bike, scooter, radio-controlled biplane and obstacle-leaping hamster Sawston and make room for my dragon. Suddenly, the little creature took a flutter hop towards me and for a second I wondered if it would turn out to be as mean as all the books said and launch itself at my face. Maybe it'd send flames at my eyes or scratch me with its sharp claws. This could be a dangerous pet. I'd probably go into school with scars and have to explain how I'd had to wrestle my pet to the ground before I could get out the door. I guess that might not be ideal. Not on a day-to-day -day basis, anyway. I started weighing up the pros and cons, remembering the cuddly class guinea pig then comparing it to a ferocious, limb-shredding, fire-breathing reptile. But even with possible loss of limbs, there didn't seem much contest. A dragon would make a really cool pet. And the more I watched it, the more I realised that this particular dragon didn't look very mean or dangerous. In fact, as it tilted its head to one side and hiccuped out a little smoke ring, the word that kept popping into my head was cute. I stayed as still as I could. I remembered something about letting dogs sniff your hand before you say hello to them. So when it didn't move again, I slowly reached out my hand, resting it on the carpet just in front of the little creature. Another flutter hop and there was a dragon sitting on the palm of my hand. An actual, live dragon. It kept its wings half unfurled as it swept its head from side to side, inspecting my fingers, which were now warm from its breath. I could feel its claws treading into my skin, like a cat trying to get comfy. I didn't dare move, in case it disappeared in a puff of, this really, this can't really be happening, smoke. Slowly, I got to my feet, keeping my hand as steady as I could. Suddenly he, I decided to assume it was a he, started jiggling from foot to foot, leaning forward as if he was about to launch and then pulling back. 
like I did on the diving board at the pool, wanting to dive, but hating the moment when I'd have to step off into nothing but air. I thought about how baby birds learn to fly and also how I'd seen their tiny bodies on the ground sometimes, the ones who had flown too soon. Was it the same with dragons? Before I could open my mouth to speak, he had taken the plunge. For a moment, the tiny dragon was flapping upwards, nose thrust forward, his wings shimmering. But then he blew out a smoky puff and began to drop, and my heart sank. I lurched forward to catch him, but just before he landed in my outstretched hands, he flapped and rose again. And he was off, soaring away over my bed. Still reeling a bit from side to side, but most definitely aloft. I watched as he swooped back round and landed with a bump on my desk. In my relief and excitement, because let's be clear, a dragon had just flown round my bedroom. I clapped my hands and gave a whoop of delight. The little dragon lifted his head. He let out another smoky hiccup, this time followed by a tiny orange spark. And then he hopped towards me. Things I noticed from close up. Glittery wings. Scales that ripple through every shade of red. Eyes like diamonds. Hot smoky breath. Sharp claws. Three at the front, one at the back of each foot. Arrowhead tail. Which he didn't seem to be able to control very well because every so often he would whip it round and bash himself and then twist his head around in alarm as if he was being attacked. Two little horns, one longer than the other. Things I did not notice. Tom Tom. Chapter five, The Tom Tom and Jerry Show. Tom Tom is big for a cat. In fact, he's gargantuan. I'm pretty sure he's half tiger and he's on the grumpy side. He's not a cuddly, sit on your lap and have a lovely stroke kind of cat. He's more of a guard cat. And I'd left the door open. So, if you've ever seen Tom and Jerry cartoons, especially the ones with that little yellow canary, you can probably picture what happens next. But if not, then here's what I saw. My tiger-shaped cat leaping from the bed in a slow motion arc. My new dragon, in mad panic mode, launching into the air, leaving a trail of scorch marks across the walls, his scales flaring a bright electric orange. Tom Tom, who had obviously forgotten he was wingless and unable to fly, very quickly came crashing down on my desk. He sent my rocket lamp, books and pens flying as he skittered across and landed in an undignified heap right on the top of my remote control car. Apparently not finished in his starring role in the new Tom, Tom and Jerry show, the cat's claws hit the big red button on my remote. This fired up the shrieking siren and spinning lights which sent him rocketing under my bed with an ear-splitting yowl. I stared at the door. There was no way my parents would sleep through this racket and I wasn't sure Lolly would either. The little dragon flew upwards and crashed into my lampshade. His claws ripped through the paper of the shade as he scrabbled to hang on to the wire frame. For a moment, he swung there upside down, not quite knowing what to do, before heading for the shelf where all my Lego models were lined up. He knocked his way past model after model and I watched in horror as hours of painstaking building tumbled to the ground. Crash! Bang! I lunged just as mum started to enter the room. I poked my head out, trying not to let my eyes drift over to the dragon perched on the shelf just behind the door. What on earth is going on? She hissed, her eyes flicked to Lolly's door. Dad appeared behind her, looking like his hair had exploded on the top of his head and brandishing a slipper as though he thought we were being attacked. Although, what help a pink fluffy slipper would be, I had no idea. Sorry, I spluttered. Tom Tom was attacking my King Kong, I had to save it. Mum frowned. I could tell she wasn't convinced. 
She tried to peer past me to see inside, but I wedged my foot against the door. What's that smell? She asked, wrinkling her nose. I sniffed and caught the faint smoky tang in the air. As if on cue, the little dragon sent out another spark that crackled in the darkness of the room. Nothing, I stammered. Just, you know, stinky cat smell. I'll give Tom Tom a bath tomorrow, I promise. Mum looked about to speak, but thankfully a well-timed scream from a grumpy at being woken lolly sent her attention away from me and the dragon who had just launched up to the lampshade. She groaned and steered Dad down the hall. They disappeared into Lolly's room, Dad still clutching the slipper. Behind me, Tom Tom hadn't given up. With eyes full of malice, he stalked back and forth, getting ready to pounce again. The little dragon was swooping and diving in dizzying circles now, clearly terrified. He kept sending out flurries of little sparks that rained down, but thankfully fizzled out before they landed. I glared at Tom Tom. Out! I hissed. I herded the spitting ball of fury onto the landing. As soon as the door had closed, the dragon flew down towards me and I held out my arm for him to perch on. He was shaking and as he pulled in his wings, I gently laid my hand across his back. His eyes were still fixed on the door as if he thought Tom Tom might come crashing back through it any second and I held my breath until I heard Mum and Dad stumble back to their room. The little dragon's claws dug into my arm as if he was poised, ready to spring at a moment's notice. I couldn't exactly stroke him like you would a cat. Well, any cat other than Tom Tom. But I kept my hand resting there until he'd stopped shivering and relaxed his grip. Sorry, I whispered. We'll be more careful from now on. He stared up at me, his twinkling eyes looking right into me. It was like gazing into one of those crystal prisms where the light is scattered into a rainbow. Fragments of colour sparkled and danced around the dragon's almond-shaped irises. I could have looked into those eyes forever. Then, just for a second, his sharp little claws tightened on my arm again. I promise, I whispered. Then his grip loosened. The tiny creature seemed satisfied that he'd made his point. His scales flickered and the fiery orange glow gradually returned to ruby red. It was only then that I took in the devastation that was my room. The scorch marks up the wall and the sparks that had left sizeable black stains on the carpet. And the poo. I learned my first important lesson about baby dragons that night. They poo a lot. Especially when they're being attacked by a miniature tiger. Well, I hope you enjoyed part three. I'm not sure what Thomas is going to do about that dragon. Do you think he'll be able to keep him a secret? Why don't you join me next time for part four? Thank you for joining me. Bye.